Who ate all the pies? Who ate all the pies? You fat bastard, you fat bastard, you ate all the pies! I did. This is steak au poivre pie 1.0, rolling with the food. This is what you'll need for the first part of the recipe. Uh, the full recipe's in the description. I'm just gonna braise this uh, chuck off about 1.5 pounds of it. I'm gonna get all of your vegetables sauteed and browned off. Getting a nice brown on your vegetables is gonna help color the sauce as well. I deglaze the vegetables with half a bottle of the Malbec and transferred that to the slow cooker. And then proceeded to brown off the meat. Until I found it was brown enough you really don't have to get that much of a brown on the, the, the beef for this purpose. Then I'm gonna add all these fresh herbs to my uh, stock pot. You can use a big pot or a large pan, however you feel comfortable braising beef. You just wanna be cooking it really slow for a, a lengthy amount of time. After I've deglazed the beef with uh, some more of the red wine, I will throw it all into the slow cooker with everything else. Fill up the pan with some water which both gets the flavor off the pan and also adds to the braising liquid and leave it overnight. So this is the uh, shortcrust pastry recipe out of Callum Franklin's book, The Pie Room, but it's pretty much standard. Uh, if you follow the instructions that I'm gonna leave in the description fully, then you'll end up with a beautiful uh, flaky uh, pastry that seriously our uh, shop bought cannot even come close to. It all revolves around keeping this part here, the water and the egg mixture chilled. Uh, make sure you use freezing cold water before you put it in the eggs, whisk them, put them in the fridge, and then once you've had your cold butter, to the flour, you just crumble it all up into like a breadcrumb uh, consistency with your fingers. I'll just keep running it through your fingers until it turns into a breadcrumb texture. And once it is there, yeah, um, get it out on your cutting board to make a little well, like a little volcano, uh, where you're gonna put that chilled egg mixture. Just keep adding it in and folding over the the uh, pastry until it's all incorporated and then very lightly knead it into a dough. Don't want to go crazy uh, with the pressure, just nice light uh, little kneads just to get everything all mixed together and incorporated. You will see little teeny weeny pockets of, uh, of butter still in the pastry. But then this is going to go in the fridge and be uh, rested for at least an hour, but I rested it uh, overnight. So the uh, red cabbage is, uh, not only is it a uh, go-to accompaniment for meat and potato pie in England for centuries, but uh, I uh, wanted to find something that had some sugar and acidity and uh, juxtaposition. So I went with this, I added cardamoms to it, which just seems to be one of the most perfect um, accompaniments to green peppercorns in general. Just sweated all the onions, the onion and the cabbage off, added all the liquids in, added the dry spices and sugar and uh, vinegar, and uh, just reduced down to a nice uh, consistency. Okay, this is the second P in the oh, P, uh, PP. Uh, it's the filling of the pie. The beef has been braised. I separate off the liquid and the beef separately, but I'm gonna use some choice little bits of carrot and onion to uh, thicken this uh, into a sort of a gravy by uh, blending it all up. Then I'm gonna add the beef to this and set aside while I make the sauce. Very thinly cut your uh, russet potatoes. Uh, add a little bit of butter so we can saute off these beautiful green peppercorns and then deglaze with brandy. I took over to the stove so I could uh, flambe it because you need an open flame to set the brandy on fire. 
add the Worcestershire sauce, the whole grain mustard, and a cup of heavy cream, and you have yourself almost an old bath sauce. But I'm gonna uh, cook off these potatoes in this cream for a little bit to uh, get them uh, halfway. I'm gonna add some fresh leaf, fresh chopped fat leaf parsley, and then introduce back into this the braised beef. Don't forget good old salt. A lot of people forget salt for some strange reason. I've seen so many people making our parm in the past and they just neglect the salt. I don't get it, uh, but obviously that's a generalization. But a lot of people when they make food with loads of spices in it, they omit the salt. Now it's time to make the last P in the uh, PP. It's the pastry, the pie. Uh, the last P stands for pie. Uh, just, um, I'm gonna use half for the base and half the lid. Uh, each gets uh, rolled out, keep turning it over and then turning it clockwise each time you turn it over. Uh, you keep using flour if you need it, but only lightly push it out. You don't wanna be smashing it. Um, grease up, I used butter for my uh, pie dish and just pack it nice and tightly. And then this is one of my favorite parts of any pie making escapades is uh, cutting the scraps off off the side like this. Oh yes. Uh, and then I um, save those for later. I'm gonna be making a recipe with those very soon. So th with the uh, pie bottom in the fridge, uh, rest in while I do the top the exact same way. And then add my filling to the pie. Honestly, you could sit and eat just the filling alone. Uh, by itself could make a meal it's beautiful stuff but uh, I made it in, I carried on making it into a pie uh, crimping it down the edges there so that uh, it seals the pie and then another session of uh, very therapeutic uh, trimming then I uh, indulged myself and made little uh, my logo into little bits of the pastry to add to the top of the pie because uh, I thought it was genius. Gonna interrupt this program to bring you a short film called Samurai Slow Down. Uh, this is just a point of the video where I ask people to like the video if you like it. But uh, most importantly, uh, share it. If you know somebody that might like it, just share it. Uh, that, can, that helps me out the most at this point in time. Thank you. Arigato. I never imagined I would be saying this when I first started making these videos, but I will be leaving a link in the description for this particular samurai sword. With the oven preheated to 400 degrees, I'm gonna brush the pastry with some egg wash and stick it in there for about 15-ish minutes. Take it out, egg wash it again, and pop it back in the oven for another about 20 minutes ish or until your pastry looks like this golden flaky beautiful off oh, this pastry is perfect um, actually this is the audio from when i uh, tried this dish and usually i'm a bigger critic of myself, but uh, this is what I had to say when I when I tried this dish. That is seriously fucking perfect. This might be a two point. Oh. Mm. Quick tip for those people like me that sometimes eat too many slices of pie. If you cut your pie into just four slices, then you'll be eating half as many slices as if you cut it into eight slices. So, uh, let me know what you would do with Opoff Pie 2.0 in the comments, and I'll see you next time.